number of two minutes. And I will talk about the multi-forms in mathematics. So, uh, first of all, I will briefly uh, describe what's the universe in mathematics. And then I will present three main views on the multiverse in mathematics. First of all, I will give some generalities on what it is and why uh, do we have this conception. And then three, uh, three, of three conceptions that I find uh, interesting that are also the main ones that are discussed in the philosophical literature. Um, Woodin has both a view on the multiverse but also on the universe. So I will uh, present the arguments of the <coughs> people, the description of their conceptions. And then I will try to discuss and compare these views. And then I will give some uh, conclusions and perspectives of the work. So first of all, the universe in mathematics, um, from an informal point of view, uh, the universe is a realm within which uh, mathematics are taking place. Um, it can be some uh, conceived part of the, of the field, but <coughs> it can be all mathematics uh, that take place in the universe. So roughly speaking, it can be interpreted as the domain of discourse of mathematics. So a universe is uh, a collection that contains everything you need to uh, deal with a given mathematical situation. Um, no, there are uh, different kinds of universes and different conceptions of it. Um, first of all, in set theory, um, there are two main universes of sets. The von Neumann universe, which is the cumulative uh, hierarchy of sets, and also uh, the constructible universe of sets, of uh, the universe of constructible Multiple sets of good. Um, there is uh, also another conception of the universe that is given by Groth and Dick as the set of uh, infinite sets uh, that are closed uh, by all means you have uh, to construct sets in the framework of ZFC. It means that uh, this universe is complete in. Uh, under all the operations of set theory that are needed to make uh, ordinary mathematics, let's say. But also categories can also be interpreted as universes, uh, because much of mathematics can be thought of as taking place in the category of sets. So uh, that's it for the... Um, there are also uh, universe conceptions in type theory, but uh, so, so that's, that's a very um, broad uh, term that is used in mathematics. Yeah. Uh, it's a short question, not very important. I just wonder. It's a long one. With uh, Burton Dick, how do you avoid uh, things like uh, contour paradox? Uh, it's not very clear. It seems a bit naive, you know, to set. Uh, um, when the, the infinite set. Uh, uh, is such a set exist? I just wonder. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. For for Grothendieck, I think that uh, yeah, the Grothendieck universe is exists and is and is well founded. Um, I I I don't know precisely which axiom and at which place you can avoid to have that, but that's that for sure. That is it's. Uh, um, it's it's a, it's a well-founded uh, universe. Right. So so it changed the definition of set uh, according to uh, von Neumann uh, universe. Um, that's a set that is made of infinite sets. No, I don't think it changes the definition okay. of set. But it's the way he's building his universe that uh, oh, right. that is um, uh, uh -huh. properly uh, made. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the multiverse in mathematics. So, um, uh, the, so one can define a, the model of a theory as an interpretation of uh, the language of the theory in such a way that you satisfy the axioms of the theory. And um, you have the forcing technique in mathematics, which is, which is a, a very powerful technique that has been developed to build 
models of ZFC. It was invented by uh, Cohen to prove the independence of the continuum hypothesis. And uh, you, he, he starts from a given model that is satisfying the theory, and then he's building an extension of that model by adjoining a new element that is outside of this ground model. Uh, it's a little bit you can uh, consider G as a kind of imaginary set. And it, has the, it is built in a way that is what we call a generic set, uh, which decides uh, the forcing conditions that are true. So the forcing conditions are the conditions that allow you to make that CH as a given uh, value. And the result of this construction is so that the, the extended model, so MG, is <coughs> itself a model of the theory. So you end up with a new structure, which is like the smallest possible uh, collection of sets that is including the, your uh, starting model that also contains G, but it's satisfying ZFC. And using that technique, um, it could show that uh, the continuum hypothesis is uh, one of the undecidable uh, uh, statements of ZFC. Because uh, from Gödel, if you assume that uh, ZFC is consistent, uh, then you, have a you can have a model of it, and you can really show that ZFC and the continuum hypothesis is consistent. So to prove this, he invented the method of inner models, and he showed that uh, the continuum hypothesis is true in its uh, smallest inner model, which is the universe of constructible sets. And then later on, uh, Cohen did the same, but he showed that ZFC is consistent with the negation of the continuum hypothesis. And in order to um, show that, he used the method of the outer model, so that's the construction uh, of M to G um, that he, he developed to show that. And so as a result, um, if you assume the consistency of ZFC, if, as you can have both see it true and false that is consistent with it, um, it could show that it was uh, one of the undecidable uh, proposal of the theory. And so uh, from using that technique, people applied it and there were uh, many other uh, statements that were shown to be uh, independent in mathematics. So that was called a kind of the independence phenomena in mathematics. And as a result, you have a kind of proliferation of conflicting models of the theory. And the multiverse was used to, uh, was introduced to represent these conflicting models because they can be used to perform mathematics. And so the main philosophical question that arises from this is um, do these forcing extension of the universe really exist? It means that are there really universes outside of uh, the traditional uh, cumulative hierarchy of sets? Um, then, um, in, in order to, to clarify a little bit the discussion and the different conceptions of multiverses that were developed Uh, the way that I will show, um, we can uh, classify uh, mathematical statements in, let's say, four types. So the ones uh, of which we know the truth value, the ones for which we there is usual search going on, but we will probably know their truth value. The third type is the ones for which we cannot know the truth value. And there is one more category. Um, these are the statements for which a truth value does not even exist. So that's uh, a possibility that is probably not universally accepted among mathematicians. 
So it could be a category that is totally empty. But from the philosophical point of view, that's uh, interesting to consider also uh, that kind of statement. Um, so um, now I present the three main uh, multiverse formulations that, uh, that's, yeah, that seem the most important and the most discussed. Uh, the first one is the one of Amkins. Um, there are two aims to uh, the approach of Amkins. That's to justify the uh, set theoretical practice and to give it a formal framework. Um, because um, as I mentioned that you can build a conflicting models of the theory, it means that you can work in one model and, in a conf and someone else in a conflicting model and developing all your mathematics. But then how to, do we represent the fact that it's something that is done in practice in mathematics? So that's a formal tool to try to, um, to justify that. Um, and that's also a way to uh, justify a conception uh, in which um, models of set theory are considered to exist really uh, in a strong platonic sense. So it means that it's really a realist approach. So these models are considered to exist really. And, and so um, we need a way to represent them um, and their coexistence. Um, with respect to the uh, settling of uh, undecidable proposal, um, there are worlds in which uh, the continuum hypothesis is true, and other worlds where it's false. So if we want to deal with such a statement, we need, of course, a multiverse conception because we will deal with that kind of model. And uh, for him, there is no need to settle the truth value of CH by introducing new axioms. You just work in the framework that is the most convenient for what you want to do. Um, a result, uh, as a, a consequence of this point of view, is that you have many different concepts of set. Uh, each of these sets uh, can be instantiated in a corresponding set theoretic universe. So it means um, that you do not have just one single universe of set theory, but you have a, a <coughs> multiverse of uh, set conceptions that are all legitimate. Okay, there is uh, some of set conceptions are preferable to others because they they are more used. Um, the, these are the, 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 the standard ones that are used, but there is no reason to uh, dismiss others. Uh, so you can, none of them can be said to be the true universe. Um, so that's really uh, what we call the, the uh, pluralist point of view with really the widest possible multiverse because all set uh, theoretical conception uh, can can be taken on board. Um, but the result um, is that um, the, there is not a clear background uh, set theory conception, but just uh, an interpretation uh, of the multiverse that is uh, showing the fact that a model of set FC can be considered as twofold. From the internal point of view of the theory, you can, it's, ju it's just a model. But then if you leave the just a theory and that you uh, adjunct with this model the things you need to perform your mathematics, you have that universe point of view. So the second uh, conception of the multiverse is the one of Van Allen and is the one who has introduced uh, the idea that there, uh, there could be, as he says, absolutely undecidable statements in mathematics. So it means that there are undecidable statements that, will, that we will never be able to solve by any means just because they do not have uh, a truth value. 
And his aim with developing this multiverse view is just to give a formal framework to such statements in case they exist. But he never says that he thinks that those kind of statement exist. They're just giving a formal framework in case you have that kind of statements in mathematics. Um, it, but uh, I don't, he sh yes, um, he shows that uh, by considering uh, with, with the, the development of the, of the forcing, the classical meaning uh, of negation has changed. So if you have two models of the theory, so two uh, realities, and uh, if you have one statement, for example, the continuum hypothesis, this is true in one uh, model but false in another one, you cannot say that your sentence is true because it's false in one of your universes. But you can neither say that it's false because, of course, it's true in the first one. So as a result, it's neither true nor false. So if you now take the negation of uh, that sentence, um, and as it is not true, um, can you say that the contrary is true? If you are saying that the negation of uh, something that is false should be true, uh, you cannot because um, you have two models and one of them where well, it's, it's false. So as a result, the traditional meaning of negation is not true, has lost uh, that classical meaning. Um, so the, the conception of the multiverse for Fahananan is that you have a multitude of possible universes. And the truth to have the truth in the whole multiverse means that you, have, you need to have the truth in each of, these, of the universes that are making the multiverse separately. So, um, so that, that's one, one of his conditions on the, on the truth because of, of course the, the truth is a big issue in the multiverse <coughs> conception. Um, he also um, <coughs> So as I mentioned, the negation uh, lost uh, the usual meaning of not true, but uh, it, it keeps the law of the excluded middle and uh, the traditional principle of uh, classical logic that are still valid in this universe. Um, so for him, um, he introduces what he calls absolutely undecidable statements. So you have undecidable statements, which are the ones that are true in some universes and false in some other universes, and the ones that are neither true nor false just simply because they lack a truth value. So that's not that you don't have access to the truth value, but it's simply not possible to access it because it doesn't exist. That's the fourth type of statements. Um, and so, um, as to deal with the issues uh, I mentioned, so for the, the issue uh, of the negation and uh, uh, to keep the laws of classical logic, he introduces, he develops a new logical approach um, that is based on what he develops, which is the teams of team semantics. And the idea of that, of his uh, universe, is it's not that every model of the axioms of set theory can uh, generate a universe in the multiverse. Because if, if you would just have a collection of possible models depending on the axioms you choose, you would not need the multiverse structure. So you would just have to talk about the collection of axioms. So for me, it's, um, it's more than that. And um, and it, it allows you to uh, represent, so to give really a formal framework to um, the, the, this kind, the, the, um, the mathematical statement for which no true value exists in case these uh, mathematical statements exist somewhere. Um, so, um, what he wants to have, it's a really a collection of universes, not a collection of models, um, and that he wants to uh, make sense of them from the internal point of view of the theory. 
Um, so the members of this collection are not models, but they are really independent universes. Um, for the logical aspects in this uh, multiverse, so the variables of set theory uh, range over all parallel universes of the multiverse simultaneously. And, oh, and he says that all these multiverses are quite similar, but they only differ at the edges. So they are really similar, but these are for so, some small characteristic that they are different. Um, the third conception of the multiverse that I uh, consider here it's the uh, generic multiverse of Woodin. And the multiverse of Woodin, it's a collection of possible universes of sets. And it's a generic multiverse, so um, it's a multiverse that is uh, generated from each universe of the collection by closing under the generic extensions. So um, that's um, that's really the smallest step, set of uh, the countable transitive sets of set FC. Um, so you, 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 you consider the uh, generic extensions only of these uh, countable transitive sets of the theory. And the, the aim of uh, Woodin is to uh, find among all the collection of possible universe and all allowed structure, the right one, the right universe of set theory, where you can settle all uh, set theoretic problem, because for him, every mathematical statement must have a definitive and right solution. Um, so his aim is really to, to find that uh, definitive solution. And for him, uh, that's something that is uh, really important. That's to really to keep the classical notion of set theory uh, that should uh, remain fixed. Um, so a sentence is true if and only if it holds in each universe of the generic uh, multiverse. Alors, um, in fact, he, uh, he developed that generic multiverse and to show uh, that um, the multiverse view is not satisfying. And there are two main reasons for that. The first one uh, is that he wants to keep a truth notion uh, that is fixed and that comes from the class classical set theory. Um, and then um, the main uh, issue for him is that if you allow to have a, this proliferation of models of ZFC, it's not compatible with the foundational role of set theory because there is not one, um, there are different models and uh, each model cannot have that foundational role. We have to find the right one. Um, so, as he argues again that uh, generic multiverse view, he proposed uh, a uni the universe view in set theory, and he argues uh, for that view. So for him, first of all, there is just one unique um, absolute background concept of set, and this uh, abs absolute concept of set uh, is instantiated in an absolute set theoretic universe, which is the classical cumulative uni um, hierarchy of all sets, in which um, every set theoretic assertion should have a different truth value. So, uh, in practice, you would be working in the given universe when you can find the right one where you can <coughs> fix the continuum hypothesis, for example, and give it a definitive answer. So, um, in order to, to, to better understand uh, the meaning and also to be able to compare uh, these conceptions, um, I've, I've tried to, to compare them from different standpoints. Um, so I will compare 
the two multiverse view of Amkins and Fahananen and the universe view of Woodin. And I will compare them uh, from different criteria. The first one is the status of the notion of set. Um, is it really central? Uh, is it the generic notion of set that is central? Or, or is it um, the model? Um, is there a, a background notion of set? Or is it any possible notion of set that is um, um, on which each model is based? Um, is there a shift from the set conception to the model conception and to the basis element of the universe and of the theory? Uh, the kind of commitment uh, you have for a mathematical object, so really the ontological status of the mathematical object, the notion of truth, uh, the foundational status of the, of, the, of the multiverse of the universe, what's the philosophical background, and how is the reality conceived? So, um, first of all, for the notion of set, so for Amkins, um, there is an array, of the, there is not one defined set conception, but that's rather an array of equivalent set conceptions. And many such uh, concepts are, uh, for Amkins, they are sufficiently uh, closely enough related uh, to be analyzed from the perspective of a, of a single set conception. For Vahananan, there is no real <coughs> commitment. Uh, I would say there is no, he, he doesn't, he, he, he is really working on the level of suppose that this exists, then what happens? He will not commit to a particular notion of set, but his multiverse is constructed on the iterative concept of set. And for, for the universe view of Woodin, there is certainly no uh, proliferation of different set concepts that would. Uh, give a proliferation model, for him the right set concept will be the one that will allow you to fix and to give a definitive answer to given uh, mathematical problems and find the right universe um, that is generated by that right set concept. If I, mean, oui. I have a small question for, uh, for clarification. Uh, you use for Hamkins the word equivalence. Uh, so set, an, set as an array of equivalent concepts. What's the what does it mean equivalent? Is just like equally good or something like that, or it's something deeper? No, um, that's not a mathematical equivalence. They are all uh, they all have the same status. There is no okay. reason to prefer one conception okay. to another. That's what I thought. Okay. Everything is possible. That makes Usually, um, cla classical set theory is, is based on the concept of set, but for the multiverse, um, there is a shift from the concept of set to the concept of model. So for Rankins, that's clearly the, the element that is really on which is a multiverse is built, it's really on the model, the different models that are uh, possible. Uh, for Vahananen, he said that clearly these are not models, but really independent universes that are uh, the, the basis element of his multiverse. While in the universe conception of Amkins, of Woodin, sorry, um, there is no shift to a notion of model, he really sticks to a one universe conception. Um, then, um, how are the, what, what's the type of commitment with respect to a mathematical object? Uh, Ankins says a lot about the, the ontology. He talks a, a lot about the, 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 diff, the set concepts, and, um, but he, 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 there is not a clear uh, ontology, a clear element that is really at the basis because that's really all possible models that are uh, set-generated, which is, 
um, something really that is uh, very schematic and you cannot really uh, compare from a formal point of view with um, that um, a loose uh, definition uh, of the, the, the mathematical uh, objects of set that are at the basis of the, of the multiverse. Uh, for Van and uh, there is uh, never um, a, precise, a precise commitment for, for anything. That's really the formal framework that he wants to give in case, um, as he says, absolutely undecidable proposal exists. Um, there is no particular ontology. Um, it's based on the iterative concept of set, which is the common ground, but it doesn't say that all the mathematical objects need to be iterative sets um, <coughs> to develop this point of view. Um, while in the universe view, view of within, the commitment is very strong and very clear, each statement has definitive and right truth value in the correct universe. Yes, one question. What is it, the type 4 math statement? Uh, just make sure. What type? Uh, so um, you remember I, I introduced the, the four types of statements that we, we can uh, consider. So this, the ones he calls the um, uh, the, in, the absolutely indecidable. So it means these are the ones that do not have a truth. Value. Let me go back to the and slide because it went quite fast. Yeah, no, it was when, ah, okay. when it was uh, not possible to say true or false in all universe, uh, for instance, or when it was true in one universe and false in another. So one. that's that's the type three. Uh, oh, okay. That's the continuum hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So these are, I would say, the simply undecidable ones. So the ones for which uh, you. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to. Um, Ah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> It's this yeah. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I remember. Okay, so, so. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to say that. Yes, uh, I see. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um. So, um. So for now, uh, the comparison uh, for the notion of truth. Um, so for Rankins, uh, there are uh, different uh, set, uh, the, the, the different set <coughs> theoretic truths, um, and so in the, the, there is a link with this concept, uh, with this multiverse conception, with model logic. So let's consider during um, the possible, uh, the possibility or the potential uh, uh, truth value of statements. Um, for Van Allen, uh, as I said, so it's um, a real uh, problem for him that negation loses its classical meaning. So um, for him, there is just one notion of truth. And so he needs uh, to uh, another uh, type of logic that he provides, and that is uh, based on what he calls the team semantics. Um, and for Woodin, that's clear that the notion of truth is fixed uh, from first order logic. Um, then uh, uh, from the uh, point of view of the foundational status of a set theory. Uh, for Ampins, um, it's uh, uh, from that point of view, um, it's really difficult to uh, reconcile the different notion of sets because these are different notions that do not necessarily have a common ground. And so it allows you to have different foundational models. Um, so the question would be, is it, well, if it could be that there is a meta-theoretic notion of set that would be more uh, 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 the background and more primitive that 
all the other notions that are possible to generate the different models. Uh, for Van Anand, it doesn't say anything about the foundational uh, status of, um, of the, on the role of the multiverse on that respect. Um, for Woodin, there is just one foundational model of set theory. And the foundational role of theory is really critical and very strong in the sense that every mathematical model will have to find its definitive answer. Um, and for the philosophical background, um, uh, these three conceptions are uh, realist conceptions of the multiverse. There are other conceptions of the multiverse. And these are ones that are conceptualist that are, uh, but, but I, I did not consider them. So for the three, uh, these are realistic, realist point of view. Um, for Ankins, there is, uh, it's a very strong realist and platonistic point of view uh, <coughs> in the notion of the existence of models, but um, when it comes to the set theoretical notion, that's uh, really a, a relativism because there is uh, not, not a clear uh, set theoretical notion um, in the background. Um, and he also uh, takes um, th the role of mathematical practice is really important. I think that's the, also one of the main motivation for him for designing these multiverse is that um, all uh, set theoretic conceptions that are used in mathematics can be um, integrated in the multiverse. Uh, Van Anand, that's also clearly a realist point of view, that's to represent um, different things that could be possible in reality. And for Woodin, that's really uh, semantic realism. It means that uh, there is the truth value, that's realism in, in, in terms of truth values of uh, the mathematical statements. Um, and, and the last uh, uh, criteria for comparison, as I said, that uh, they are all uh, realist point of view, but they have a slightly different point of view you on uh, what mathematical reality is. Uh, for Rankin's reality is really unique, but there are different facets. You cannot approach all these facets uh, at, at the same time. So, um, but uh, you, you have different math the mathematical tools allow you to access one of these facets of reality at a time. So that's really the, the way his multiverse is, is conceived. Uh, for Van Allen, that's, uh, that's very different. The reality for me is, is not at all multifaceted. He, he, he states it um, uh, in plain text. Uh, but it's as if reality wouldn't fix everything because um, these uh, absolutely undecidable statements are possible. Um, and there is not um, the, 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 a well determined uh, reality of mathematical uh, objects, but rather um, multiple uh, sub-realities that are represented in all the parallel universes uh, that are part of this multiverse. And um, so the, the aim of the multiverse is to represent the full reality with each um, of the universe that is, that of the parallel universe that is, uh, that correspond to a sub-reality. Um, in the universe view of Woodin, um, the set uh, theoretic universe is unique. It's really the universe of all sets. So the, the universe is the reality and it must represent all the existing sets. Um, so um, 
the, 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 so the, the conception is that you, should, you have to find the right universe of set theory that represents the reality. And in that view, in, in that uh, right universe, everything would have a definitive answer. But it, the, the problem then is to, to have the way to discover the final truths um, when you have just one universe that represents all the reality. So the <coughs> conclusions, so I, I focused on three main uh, multiverse realist conceptions. Um, I think that all of them deal with different, are designed to deal with different types of mathematical statement. Uh, for Boudin, that's the universe view, so that's find the, the right universe uh, so that all mathematical statements would have a, definite, a definitive truth value that we would know. And his aim is even to merge uh, the third type, so the, the, the um, statements of the C, CH type, as uh, uh, statements that on, we are on our way to know the truth value. And the, the multiverse of Amkins uh, represents really the, the type of uh, mathematical statements for which we uh, determine decidable. And uh, for Vahananon, that's um, one step further. So the ones uh, for which we don't know, uh, there, there is no uh, truth value. Um, and the, the multiverse of Vananan is very promising and very interesting because it gives a formal framework uh, for the multiverse uh, from inside the theory with keeping uh, the, the, law of the laws of classical logic. But it needs to adapt uh, the logic uh, and the notion of truth. Um, so the question now is, um, could the other types of mathematical statements fit into its formal context? So it, it would give um, a satisfying, very satisfying formal framework um, for all types of uh, mathematical statements that could exist. But of course, um, the strongest commitment and the, the most clear um, conception of the mathematics is of course given by the universe view, because the truth uh, as a very clear notion, sets have a, have, have a very clear notion, but of course there is no, it, it does not say how to find these final truths. And also from the foundational point of view, of course, the, uh, the, the universe view is the, the one that is the most attractive. So um, there, are still, there are still perspectives, of course, to this work. Um, there is no um, um, answer to the main question is to know if these forcing ex expressions <coughs> of B really exist. Um, and also the, the kind of corollary question to this one, it's, um, is the multiverse really a mathematical object in itself? Or is it just something that, uh, that's a tool that we use now um, that, that, will, that will have a temporary life that we use now to represent mathematics as we know them at, at this time of the development or will it really um, will we always need uh, this kind of view uh, for uh, conceiving mathematics and uh, following the criteria um, the universe view um, is, of course, the most satisfying 
Um, is, with, with the main reason, uh, which is the foundational role of set theory, but um, there is still the big issue of how to find this right universe and how to identify. So anyway, the, at this stage, the multiverse remains a useful tool to account for the variety of models that are uh, generated by, by, the, by, forcing, uh, by the forcing technique. And so I, I was wondering if uh, we could, perhaps, but I don't know, make a comparison with uh, the multiverse that is used in uh, quantum mechanics. So there was that the, the many world interpretation of uh, quantum mechanics. So, um, so in, in quantum mechanics, from that point of view, um, while that's uh, the, 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 the cat of Schrodinger, who is both, who can be both dead and alive, and once you perform the experiment, you, you put an end to uh, these uh, conflicting coexisting states. So uh, the multiverse would be seen as a tool that allows us to interpret our exper experiments, the one in which the ones that give you the result dead and the ones that give you the result alive. Um, and I see the, a parallel between the two. Um, so the, in mathematics, there would be the existence of conflicting models of set theory. Um, and uh, the multiverse would be a tool or a structure that would allow to interpret and to represent this coexistence. But um, I think that there is a, 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 the, the conception is of the many words interpretation is very different because I think that in that conception, the universe uh, represents everything that exists. So it is unique. It, it, re it really represents everything. And it's inside the universe that there are these many worlds. While in mathematics, that's rather the contrary. We have the multiverse with the uh, parallel universes that are these many worlds. So but, but that's just a guess. Um, I don't know if, it's, uh, if it makes sense to, to compare these two approach. Or um, yeah, if, if, if it represents um, something in the on the two uh, in physics and mathematics, the fact that we cannot uh, access um, uh, the reality uh, fully, uh, some parts. So yeah, I think that that's it. Thank you for your Or do you want to have a break? Uh, it's a <coughs> uh, maybe five minutes. Yeah, let's have a five minutes break. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. <coughs> and then we shuffle the order. Yeah. No, it's okay. We, we can go. First. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just had a question about this slide. So okay, we'll go ahead. No, no, but we don't. Uh, no. Take the post, okay. So okay. No. The no. <laughs>
Ouais, ouais. Tu pensais pas qu'il y avait... J'ai pris ta pause maintenant, tu as ouais. dû expliquer tous les euh, trucs de ton travail. Ouais. Ok, mais si tu es prête... Oui, oui, ça va, oui, merci, oui, oui. Yeah. Ok, uh, <laughs> no, first, I, I, I was expected you to show a book lab where we could vote for favorites. Uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I would vote for Van Allen. You would vote for Van Allen, okay. Yeah, Van okay. Allen, okay. maybe because you present it in such a good way. You, you, you mean Van Allen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. And so my question is about uh, this uh, latest slide. I just wonder what is the if there is a cause, a common cause, for the reason that we consider multiverse in quantum mechanics and mathematics. For instance, you know, in quantum mechanics, maybe we have a concept of set in somewhere, which lead to indecidable statements. And for mathematical reason, in a, in a quantum mechanics, we start thinking about multiverse. Uh, but I guess it's not a set. Uh, theory, but maybe we have uh, some uh, mathematical tool similar. Um, so y your question is, are there ma similar mathematical tools for quantum mechanics that lead to that conception? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, <coughs> if the reason is not mathematical in, in quantum mechanics. Um, I'm, I'm not a specialist, but I do not think that it's for a mathematical reason, but uh, I think it was just to, to explain uh, something that, that seemed weird uh, in reality, that you would have coexisting states. It's uh, to solve the, the German problem. So, so it's to solve the version of the problem. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that really just, yeah, to, yeah, to, 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 to as you said, to, to interpret the experiment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know that there are also other interpretations, like the Bohm uh, interpretation, that allows you to get rid of this uh, kind of conflicting representation of the uh, wave function. But that uh, interpretation has also uh, some uh, uh, weak points or weaknesses. Well, they all have. So, yeah, <laughs> because each they time you, you win something on one side, you lose it on the other side. But, uh, but if, if I can yeah. add something, yeah. if there is an analogy to do with what you explain the multiverse, it's probably not the multi-world uh, Everett version, but the Wallace version. Uh, which one? So, because in the Everett, there's collapse of the branches. But in the Wallace Dirge version, the dominant one today, all the, all the branches exist forever. They all exist. And they use uh, branching logic to, to, to define truth in the, in, the, in the trees of the possible trees. So, of course, it's not exactly the same as you, because you, it's parallel universe, okay? But there, are, there is parallel branch with definite value. Something could be false there and true there. The same, the same statement. So if there is an analogy, which I'm not sure at all, <laughs> If there is one, it's not the Everett one. It's what they do with Everett today. It's the Dutch Wallace Saunders version of, uh, of uh, the many, many, okay. many worlds. Because there's no, no, they still coexist. There, there's no collapse. All the branch, infinite number of branch, they, they still exist. It's the total system is the universe. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a branch, you're in isolation. You know, something true for you be false in the other branch. So you're, you have the continuity, but this is true for you, but false in the other branch. The branching frame might actually also work uh, for these uh, approaches. It's not what people do, but I find it an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, because cool. you can extend universes like this, this these outer models. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. you can, can go look at of which is my universe. Like in which uh, a bigger universe can you draw the, your universe? So we are in this universe, but you might think that there is somebody living outside of there who sees you as just one of the sets. Mm -hmm. um, and you could say that that is one branch to go out, one super universe is one branch, and then another super universe is another branch, something like that. I don't know. It's. Uh, 
Um, I will say fast, the question is because uh, I, I have the feeling it's not only about the experiment problem that we uh, talk about uh, multiverse in physics. When I, when I listen to some talks, it's also related to uh, um, like uh, from the, the fact that we can change some physical constants and uh, you know, for, for instance, you change the uh, light speed and you have a kind of other universe. And so I just wonder if we could have at some yeah. point a competition yeah. between yeah, but different worlds. kind of multiverse in physics. Yeah, it's another. Yeah. Uh, so there's, okay. there's the many worlds, mm -hmm. which is a multiverse. But and there's the multiverse in the uh, in the uh, uh, string theory, for example, where you know in one you have a certain constant, but in another one yeah. different constant. Uh, yeah, because I was, I was and they are not they are not related. Sometimes oh, it's it's very mixed the two, but they, they are not the same. Yeah, yeah, conceptually it seems very different. But maybe this um, one is closer, the yeah. other one closer to the universe of mathematics. We have like action and uh, different yeah. competing theory, and maybe we, we try to find a common. Uh, if you, you know, have different physical worlds, it looks like different model. Possible. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's not related to your topic. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, and also um, the, the, the conception of Vananam is of parallel worlds. But uh, I have another point of view on the, the multiverse that are more those that are intricate. And I, th so that's another conception that is probably. A, a better interpretation for Amkins, I, I think that, so, um, th th yeah, there are different interpretations and I would say different types of multiverse in mathematics and perhaps also in physics, just not, mm -hmm. I don't know of parallel, parallel world, but intricate world, I don't know if it's, uh, but, but I don't know to which point it would re make sense. To it, it seems as if, but... Uh but actually, that gets to a, a question that I had, it's a, nice, it's a nice transition. So, I mean, one thing that occurred to me, and again, I, I, I know some set theory, but I don't know any of the literature you were talking about, so I have a pretty fundamental question, but... Um, when I see how how different, I think your comparisons are great and they show really nicely that these different concepts are really not the same, right? These are radically different ideas of, of what this is. And so I wonder, is there a, might, might we just respond to this and say, well, there's not just one notion. There's the, we're, we may be, we're using the word multiverse to refer to just too many different kinds of things, right? Maybe there's a sort of equivocation here. Um, like why? I guess I guess maybe a way to put it is a question. So, so why? What's the? Does what makes it desirable to study um, all of these different theories as sort of being about the same thing? As opposed to just saying, well, oh, look, these people have radically different goals. They are building radically different metaphysics. Um, so yeah, I mean, what, what's, what is it that makes them all multiverses, I guess? It's, a, it's, a, it's maybe what I'm asking. Um, so your question is, what, what do they have in common? Yeah, if they, uh, they given, given all the differences that you showed, you know, maybe the right answer is to say that, you know, only maybe only one of these should count as being a real really about the mathematical multiverse and the others are just confused, they're calling it the wrong thing, or we should call it something else. Um, um, I don't think I can answer from the ontological point of view really what to do the do they have really as in common. But I think that the idea is that um, that's to to have a structure that would um, ex explain, um, uh, that, that would allow to represent uh, some conflicting things, and then that stru um, the, and the structure you, you put with the multiverse gives you um, 
um, it, uh, it, it enriches your, your point of view on, on reality. For, for example, for, for developing uh, other kinds of logic that would ex explain that. So that, that's a little bit to say that there is m that it's more than a juxtaposition. There is not just one conception, but um, yeah, that, that I would say that it's uh, it's allows you to have a richer interpretation okay, sure. of what what is of what one technique, which is the forcing. That, that's oh, that, that, that's awful. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, <coughs> this is very interesting. I am mean, I, I, not super familiar with this literature. I've been interested and in willing to study it, but uh, I didn't have the time and uh, strength to do it. I have a question though about, um, about Wiggins' approach and the sense in which it is realist. Because uh, you said that they all qualified as being realist in some sense, but it wasn't clear to me. How Wooden was really. Um, I think you talked about semantic realism, and uh, a, it's not exactly so. It's a clarificatory question, and uh, perhaps another question I have which is related and uh, probably gives a bit more an indication of what I don't really understand. But if I, if, if I understood correctly, so Wooden has a more like constrained notion of multiverse in the sense that he wants, only considers possible models of set theory that are generated in a certain way, which means that, um, so one way to approach the question of realism, but I'm really not sure that's the way you want to, to ask it, but one way to do it is to say, well, you have all these, you have a number of uh, possible models of, uh, of set theory, and by possible you mean anything that can be described in some like, meaningful way. And then, the question is, should we be uh, realist about all these descriptions? Do all these, de these descriptions capture a real mathematical, or a real possible mathematical universe? And here it seems that within the position may be described as saying, well, only a subset of those possible models will actually capture real uh, mathematical reality. Uh, and others, they are just like, meaningless or uh, like uh, words, or so to speak. I mean, I, I suppose that uh, at least some of them that are not generated, how would you call it, like um, gen general, no, generic, those, are the, the, those that don't have the gen generosity property will not be considered as like <coughs> genuinely describing a sort of reality. And if this is the case, perhaps there is a way to uh, compare within Say that within is anti realist about those specific models. But I don't know if you would agree with this. Uh, I don't know if what I said makes sense, but <laughs> I'm right. And uh, if I am, I don't know if you agree with this way of putting things. Yeah, that's true that the, the generic multiverse of within, it's really the, the, the smallest um, multiverse possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that he would design it as really the. The, the smallest one and the universe of the outer model of uh, ZFC uh, for the continuum, for example. So um, I think that he would design the smallest one and then already show with such the smallest conception, he ends up already with um, issues um, uh, for the, the, the truth. Uh, which are really uh, for him, um, uh, he cannot live with that, let's say. Um, and so that's a way to, 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 to reject and to, to show that even with the, the, the smaller multiverse, you already end up with, uh, in, in trouble with, um, uh, so uh, you said that uh, it, it's realist, the, the point of view of, uh, of within, it's really the uh, uh, sem uh, uh, re re semant semantic realism, really in the, the truth value f for him. So the, the, the idea is that um, every uh, mathematical model should be settled. 
Um, and so you, you did just to, to, to improve and to, to, res to increase the research to find, uh, for example, uh, links between uh, some undecidable uh, proposal. If you make the assumption <coughs> we did absolutely, uh, you, f you fix uh, that other statement and that gives you the, the right universe and the, the mathematical reality where you can work. Um, so um, I, I don't know if if, uh, if I answer your question your question with that. Um, um, it's a realist because they think every the others are wrong and we capture the reality and there's a <laughs> correspondence. Yeah, yeah. I think what might be the problem here is that yeah. as a what you're realist about. Yeah. Uh, so he's not realist about the multiverse, of course, because that should be bullshit. I mean, yeah. how very true value has to be determined. Uh, that's purely a heuristical tool uh, that mathematicians use to get to the actual universe. So he's, and that, that's what you mean, pro meant probably that it's realist about universe, not about the multiverse as being containing something more than just one universe. Does that make sense? As a, the, so. As a solution to this problem, that, that we are confused about what he's realist about? Or so I guess, so, what is, what is clear that, so the, the uh, yeah, if, if by, if by semantic, the claim of semantic realism is just the claim that every mathematical statement has a truth value, then of course uh, I completely understand what it means, but when people, uh, let me make an analogy with the metaphysics of modality because I think this is relevant and this is what I had in mind. So metaphysics of modality, you have people who talk about possible worlds in order to define the notion of possibility and necessity. And then there's a question whether we regard those possible worlds as like real things or just as a, a ersatz that we use when we make calculations about possibilities and necessity that do not really exist. Uh, and it seems that so they have this view of like modal realism or realism about possible worlds, which is the view that those, those things are there, they are part of reality. Um, and so when you ask the question of realism with respect to the multiverse inside theory, I take it that this is a kind of like analogical question where you consider all those possible uh, models of set theory and, and you wonder whether they are part of mathematical reality or not. And, uh, and perhaps like realism can be classified as more or less like strong depending on how much of those models you, you, you count as like being really uh, uh, part of mathematical reality. And, uh, and if you approach realism in this way, then it seems like within <coughs> like it's very low. Uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot of possible models that you would not have a realistic attitude to. Unlike, for example, Hankinson, unlike also a little bit more uh, vain and hopefully should pronounce it. Like, that, that's what the kind of like uh, things I wanted to say. I mean, it's, not, it's more like to check that I that kind of understand <coughs> the point about realism. Because that's, yeah. I well, hope this is not too confused. It makes sense. Okay, if, if it does, then I, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I have a closely related question about because it's I have difficulty to understand with it. So, so we start from mathematical universe as you know very loosely domain of discourse, uh, ontological domains of mathematics, something like that. We discover all these bizarre results. The first two you present seems to give us a variation of the idea of domain of discourse, ontological domain, to make sense semantically of all these new results. So, oh, okay, you have this independence of very important, it's because it's true there and false there. So to have a semantic interpretation of it. And Wooden says, everything new is epistemological. It's because we are confused. Every statement are true or false. So this guy is clearly a reactionary against the history of mathematics, so he must have a motivation to say something bizarre like that. 
So what is the motivation to just say that every big understandable proof of 20th century is just epistemological? It's because we, we, don't, we don't have the right one. How could he say that and be taken seriously? So I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> The question is the other way around, actually. The other ones are not taken seriously by the mathematicians. They still have this reactionary view. There is, I mean, among mathematicians, oh, yeah, okay, okay. hardly but, any but, debate. But, but, yeah, okay. <laughs> so he doesn't have to defend himself. He's like, these things have true values, and we don't know whether they, what they are, and there are some limits to our formal systems. But we have tools to think about these models. Like as abstract constructions, and that's good enough. So what yeah. you're saying, and maybe she will confirm, is that wooden is the mainstream. Yeah. In math. In math. In in non-traditional math. Yeah, to the extent that that theory ever is non-traditional, but yeah, yes. So do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So in fact, wooden do, does not even have to argue because it's the main position. Every mathematical statement has a true value. That's classical logic. But uh, is this, is this <laughs> yeah, I thought classical logic was dead. Yeah, it's not. That's what it You can hang around with Peter. No, I, th I thought the result of Cohen. <laughs> so old fashioned. I thought the result of Cohen was among, and there's many of them in the 20th century, that people said, okay, even ZFC, no, not, not the. Gödel, weirdo, blah blah blah. You know, ZFC push us towards that kind of things. So I'm convinced. So not necessary. I mean, so, sorry. Okay. But but <laughs> we are cutting you, sir. Please. Yeah, but but Woodin is a is a set theorist, and and is. Making re research on the on the large cardinal axioms, and I think that from that point of view, um, if he were not convinced that he can go forward to settling proved values of the mathematical statements on which he is working, it would be useless to do to do what he does. No? Ah, so, okay. <laughs> um, so I think that it's really the, the hope of being able to, yeah, to, to, yeah, to further link uh, things that are undecidable but that can be related, and to, yeah, to, okay, but to come with the universe view that is the mathematical reality. But this this reactionary position is it just? I'm asking a sociological question. Is it mostly set theorist? Because in category theory, I'm quite sure people would accept that multiverse thing is complicated, you know. But set theory, it's true if you work on something and it's on the side of it. <laughs> it's bad. No, I don't know. Because I'm surprised, okay? Because I thought the lesson was coming from geometry. You know, we thought that everything has a true value. Oh, there's so many other kind of geometry. Things becomes very complicated. Depends, everything becomes contextual in mathematics. You know, you have a proof there, but suddenly it doesn't work there, and you discover another domain, another. Mm -hmm. And the multiverse that the two first you presented seems to be in the same movement. Is that okay? We have this result. Let's build a semantic where it makes sense. It will be. It won't be anti-realist and just everything goes. It will be something sophisticated with reference with true value. Because for me, the with it, I don't understand. The guy is just saying. <laughs> except if I didn't understand your talk, he's just saying. Everything has a value, so every proof <laughs> that we did of undecidability are all insufficient. A priori. I know that a priori. Yeah, not to say I had the same reaction, like, oh, Woody is really... No, I try to understand all where, where, where it's coming from. Where it's coming from. But maybe it's coming from satire. You know, he is the uh, best satirist around. Uh, he's, he's he is a set theorist. He is like the best. There is no one who understands set theory better than he is. 
And so theory is, uh, is, is, is always been a platonistic enterprise. Mm. I mean, even the most like uh, anti-realist uh, mathematician, if they use the word set, they don't have this idea that there might be several kinds of set. Mm -hmm. uh, like take the set of natural numbers, that the set of natural numbers, uh, take uh, the, the, the omega, uh, omega is omega, there is not like two, uh, something like that. Uh, or the set of real numbers. I mean, these these are these branches that are not algebraic, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's as long and these undecidability the results they don't say anything about problematic nature of of uh, of, of such a hardcore realism. They just say that the theories we have the axiomatic mm -hmm. uh, approach does not give us any will not always give us an answer. But uh, we have these constructions of universes, like the constructible universe of Gödel, that gives an answer to uh, the, 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 the continuum hypothesis, for example, whether that's true in that universe or not. Um, so we have other ways than the axiomatic things that are, I think, intuitively mostly, giving us access to, to that reality, whatever that is. Um, and so there, is, there has never been a real deep push towards a sort of, like in geometry, these things seem to be equally okay. Yeah, and, yeah. But in set theory, there is like deep discussions about whether CH is true or not, and, and, and Buddha himself has changed his mind and, and gave very deep arguments why you'd either go for CH or not CH. Uh, um, so, so, so this sort of relative, relativism, I think, is very threatening to, to meta. To, and, and very unnatural to somebody working with set theory. Mm -hmm. And you're right that in category theory, they found a way around it. Uh, mm -hmm. And they think that that's probably the reason why it's superior as a function yeah, of mathematics. Course, that's something else. Yeah. But then there's problems like uh, it's based around collections, and collections are not well defined. No, right? Absolutely. No, I'm not saying that they are superior. I'm just saying that it, it's a culture that seems to have other. Other prejudice. Yes, yes, yes. Very different prejudice. Okay. So, so uh, like in, in these kind of proofs, you know, this, they use model logic. So they make in these proofs. There's also like boxes and in the squares, like in the model logic. Or how should I see this modal aspect of uh, okay. these things they're investigating? Um, in when they talk about uh, being truth is being true in all universes and, and all these kinds of things. How, how do they? How does it look like on a paper? Like such a proof. Just to have an idea. Uh, for, for the for Amkins, it's uh, it, the, the framework is re, it's it's uh, the, the the formalism of model logic. Uh, for Vernon, that's more uh, yeah the the formalism of uh, of classical logic. I think really with the what it, the, the main. I think with, with this team semantics is just introducing um, just not the, um, the fact that you use uh, a sort of uh, ensemble of statements that would represent the, the, the statement in uh, different universes and that has implications on its uh, definition of the disjunction. But for the rest, the, the framework is, I think that's really classical logic for uh, VNN, but and model logic for Amkins with uh, the paper of Benedict Lowe. Um, yeah. yeah, so, so with so uh, the, if the possible uh, quantifiers, yeah. yeah. So for Amkins, indeed, did they, they have worked a real model logic with the boxes and everything? Yeah. And uh, for Van, it's, it's purely. Uh, a semantic thing like uh, uh, the, the quantifier for all does not mean for all in a universe, but something like for it's true for all objects and all universes, 
um, and the negation is something weird, like it, it you have to do some uh, 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 the Morgan. You don't have directly um, not A being defined in terms of A, but not A and B, for example, being the same as not A or not B. See the Morgan law uh, applies. So, so this kind of recursive semantics that is just looks a little bit like a traditional semantics, but it's a bit more complicated. But there's no explicit modal uh, um, connectives or something used. But of course, under the hood, it has a modal flavor. Okay. So I'm just trying to make a little bit sense of what kind of mathematics this is, you know, and then. Uh, um, so, what these research papers are about, so this is, it's not like we make some conjectures and we see how we can prove them with what kind of actions. It's not like that, it's more like provability of systems in terms of, you know, good old questions. Because um, I, I, yeah. I just tried for myself, try to make sense of the mathematics that is done, like, yeah. These are presupp these are like, okay, questions presupposing, presupposing your talk. It's not like a really question about the talk, but just. Um, yeah. In Amkin's paper, you have the, yeah, he shows uh, different things and demonstrates some theorems. To argue and to, to develop his, uh, his, uh, his point of view. Um, in Venenan, that's, that's more really that's, that's just a, a more for me a logic, logic paper. Then I would say that in Amkins, it's more yeah, like the ma traditional mathematics uh, theorem propositions, demonstrations, but you also have that for. Um, in the paper of Anand. Um. But in, in none of these things are really set theoretic results. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe some mathematicians one day will use this to do their set theory, but these are mainly philosophers. Who so, uh, yes, so, so it's really more like. Foundation. Yeah, okay. But, but so it's really. Problems, you know, there's many philosophy, uh, mathematical papers that are built in entities, not just proving stuff. Yes, yes, yes. But it's not really some the theoretical notions. No, okay. No, I agree with you. Here. It's like on a meta but, level. But you were pushing them to that these guys are doing philosophy. Uh, no, but they are <laughs> philosophers. Yeah. Uh, they, and they are on a meta, mathematical <laughs> level. Um, I mean, Hamkins is also a great mathematician, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he wants theorems that. I mean, I don't think he sees his theorems that are related to this multiverse as mathematical. Okay. It's not a mathematical concept of multiverse. Uh, Sorry, I cut you with my chip. No, no. No. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, so I have a question about uh, the, 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 co the costs of those multiverses approach. So if you start, if we, if we look at the dialectics as a, how reactionary you want to be, how reactionary you want to be, or mainstream you want to be, and how revisionary you want to be, so you take, like, a, you take a William view as the most, like, mainstream, and, and then uh, the other two others, I don't know how to classify them as which one is the most revisionary. But, it's, but the, to go, like, beyond uh, the, the within multiverse view, goes with, with some costs. Uh, so, I mean, it's mostly practical equations to see if I understand, if what I say is like, makes sense. Uh, so if I understood correctly, in the, in the Hamkin case, in the, Ham, in the, in the Hamkin's uh, uh, view, you have the cost of the multiverse is to have a like, semantic in the, in term, in the terminacy about the concept of sets. You, we're not sure anymore about what set means, right? It can mean several stuff, and we have to accept that. 
that that's, that can be seen as a kind of a cost. We have to we lose that understanding, the impression of having a, an understanding. Uh, and I think this is an important cost. And uh, and then the cost for the other approach is like we lose logic basically. I mean, we lose. We we need to change logic, which is also a big cost. Uh, I mean, a very big one. I mean, I'm, usually I'm fine with it. It's just like, I mean, I'm fine with changing classical logic, but um, but the way it's, I mean, it seems very ad hoc in the sense that you have to change it in a certain way to fit the multiverse. But uh, it's not. For example, you can change the classical logic to deal with uh, like uh, semantic paradoxes and stuff. But uh, but the semantic paradoxes have a very well not very well understood. That kind of there's a structure that is kind of like robust, and um, and those are pervasive phenomena uh, with analogies with sets and stuff. So kind of like and also you can see how to recapture classical logic when you remove the like, semantic predicates. I mean they are so. But here it looks like. A, the new, like, uh, I, mean, I haven't seen the paper uh, in detail of Bayanino, uh, but uh, it, it looks like it's also a cost to, uh, you see, it seems much more ad hoc than the kind of change that you make in the. Uh, so, um, yeah, do you see those things as costs for the multiverse view, or how, uh, how do you see these uh, commitments? Do you think they are problematic, or? I don't know if it's really the multiverse view that costs, mm -hmm. or if it's the full thing that costs. Because the multiverse, for, for, for me, it's 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 a, it's certainly a tool. I would say that it's a ma well-founded mathematical tool that allows you just to to represent the, the consequence of a of a perfectly uh, mathematically correct technique. Um, be, because the, the the cost of changing the logic comes from the fact that. Starting from um, a theory, so ZFC, mm -hmm. uh, you, you with, with the same language and everything, you can build um, models that uh, in which one given statement is true, and the same model with the same statement that is false. So um, I think that it it comes f from that that. It Costs you, and that you you have the issues with the negation, with the what what, what for, for truth, rather than the, the than building the, the multiverse view. Uh, um, as we have, I mean, we just talk past each other on what exactly is. I mean, by multiverse view, I I mean a uh, philosophical view that takes seriously. Is multiplicities of models, of course, I take it as a sort of like mathematical fact that uh, those models of different block models established, like produced by enforcing technique, are there in a sense that you can, uh, we know that those models uh, are possible in some sense. I mean, you can describe them and you can use them to establish independent results. But then there's the next first step, which is to, uh, to build a philosophical view. To connect those models to the true value of um, of mathematical statements, which is uh, what Venenens is, is trying to do in some way, trying to do correctly, and Hamkins is trying to do in another way. And what I mean by the multi metaverse view is the result of this second step, which I take to incur some extra philosophical commitments. Uh, on top of just like recognizing like the mathematical results that comes from forcing, I know that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah, I see a, li a little why bit. Why do you see a big cost? Because you don't, you don't seem to see a big cost. Why do you see the cost particularly heavy? I don't know. I mean, if if I. Uh, I suppose I'm, a, I'm not a mathematician at all, so I'm a set theorist and someone some day if there's a very constant say, hey, you thought you understood what it means by set, but in fact it can mean like several stuff that are not just one concept of set. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like my epistemic uh, position regarding to what I do every day would be much worse. So uh, it would be like a, would be a bad news for me. 
uh, it would make the epistemology of uh, Satsimui much more complicated. So I see that as a cost, but I don't know if the cost is the right way to think about it. That's, that's why it's kind of a question. But um, so perhaps change if you, change, if, you, if you need to change your logic, that's definitely a cost. Yeah, if you need to change your logic, yes. that's, 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 that's something to argue for. Is, um, is, you know, when you adapt branching logic, okay. You have this internal, external that suddenly you have to, to think about that you didn't have in classical logic. Once you pay that cost, okay, it's it's not excessive. It's it's very analogous to branching logic. But you can't branching. You know, yeah, the logic when you are in a branch and the true value can change technology. another branch, and but you have you can look at the outside of the branching system and talk about the logic. Are you talking about like a logic of tensor modality or? Yeah, yeah. Traditional logic, traditional traditional modality, logic of tensor modality is supposed to, uh, so it's not a revision of classical logic, it's an enrichment. But just, it's an enrichment. Uh, it's well, just that you I are really so attached to the way I, 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 I disagree with that because uh, like, the language of, uh, of the fat theory is just uh, uh, in the case of Hopkins, the, the enrichment view can be defined because it's model logic. But in the case of uh, Benena, I'm not sure it can be uh, it can go that way because it just keeps the same fertile language of mm -hmm. uh, of, um, of, uh, of of set theory. He has exactly the same uh, the same connectives, so it just changes the meaning of negation and of the quantifier, frankly. So it's a uh, it's good old and revision of classical logic. So that so there's a there's a cost here, uh, which is I think I mean I still don't understand this attachment to set theoretical stuff. Well, it's probably <laughs> <really good. laughs> I don't know. Since when science is completely stable and does not change? <laughs> uh, Even in mathematics. No, I think it has to. It can change, but it must change for good reasons. And uh, yeah. I have, I'm okay with changing logic, but there's uh, very good reason. There's a lot of unstability and problems. But okay, but yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I, I just I don't want to hijack the. It seems like he, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry. He's talking sorry. to me, so I feel like. Yeah. I was, <laughs> but just I, so correct me if I'm wrong because you're the expert and not. But so you don't have to go. The, the reason why I present it as a cost is that uh, you can just decide if you have like an inside of the and say, okay, but who said that ZSC is like the complete truth about like uh, the universe of sets? No one said that. For us, we have made some axioms and we just need to find good reasons to add new axioms. And if we do that, we don't have to change logic. And we don't have to say, well, actually, we don't really understand what we mean by set. You see? So uh, so that's why I think that those, uh, those uh, Philosophical Mertalder views that are very interesting, I think, philosophically and ontologically and logically, so it's a very interesting intuition. But, uh, but perhaps it's overkill to solve the problems that are raised by, uh, by the, the, the independence results. I mean, I think that's, uh, that's a view I think that makes sense to me. I don't know uh, if perhaps it's a mainstream view. I cannot, I cannot talk for the mainstream because I'm not even my condition, but I suppose it should be around the more mainstream. But yeah, I, I agree with you that you have a cost in terms of logic, but on the other hand, it's an, an enrichment in terms of interpretative power. Okay, yeah. So... No, no, of course, the, 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 some costs are, are right to pay, so then it's a matter of appreciation where, yeah. like uh, David Lewis, when he... Uh, you see, this didn't say that uh, there was no cost for uh, like having a plurality of possible worlds, but his main argument was that the cost is right uh, because that's the best way to solve uh, the number of problems that he felt were important that the competitors couldn't, couldn't, couldn't solve. So uh, the fact to, to point out that there is a cost is not to say that uh, the cost is uh, it's not a reason to reject the thing. It's just to point out that well, it has a cost. You know, it's not for free, uh, and, uh, and you might. Consider the cost like uh, uh, seriously before you just like uh, go your bank, you know, and just like uh, withdraw some cash and just buy the buy the stuff. You know. Use a capitalist. <laughs> and after you say, don't don't yeah. underestimate the cost of your solution. That say, oh, maybe I can add axiom to fix that thing, and at one point, when does it stop? 
okay, no, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. All the costs should be uh, all like assessed independently. And but it's true, I think just maybe you could. I think it's between the algebraist and the set theorist. Now the set theorist, they have this idea of objects and action and things. And there's another tradition in mathematics that is becoming more and more dominant, which is algebraic and morphism and ruler and things like that. And my impression when I was studying mathematics was that the algebras are winning. And the set theorist is very yeah, but they are still the purest and blah blah blah. <laughs> and uh, it's like people working on the uh, on the uh, prime numbers in the department of mathematics. They are like a sacred cow of the department <laughs> because they work on. That was uh, when I was an undergraduate. That was John Conway. Everybody walked right. around looking at him like. No one knows why he even does any of the things he studies. <laughs> But it's all really cool, so we're not going to tell him no. He's very smart. He's clearly the smartest man on the, this university, so no one yeah. will tell him no about anything. And, uh -huh. and maybe, yeah, okay. Maybe there's the question of cause depends on which culture you are inside mathematics. And yeah, sure. I'm going to study the game of life and large, <laughs> large cardinals, and people are like, cool, cool. okay. <laughs> I wanted to add something to the discussion here about uh, Manan to, to, to defend him a little bit. Uh, so, so there is a, like the, this chain of logic is indeed a great cost, uh, but it's not intervening with mathematical practice. And so you could say that this cost is like um, epistemically not that great uh, to, because like the, the there is still the possibility that there are no type 4 sentences and then the, it will just collapse to complete classical logic. Um, and as soon as we prove something, all the classical, I mean, anyway, all classical tautologies and so on, they are all old in all these theories. Uh, they all get the value true. Um, so so the, like it's only if you look at it from a sort of very broad uh, uh, meta perspective, no, no meta perspective, but, but a broader perspective that the usual the set theorist would uh, care to look. You don't see the distinctions uh, with, with classical logic. So, but that it's still, I, I, I kind of get the point that it's sort of ad hoc. Uh, why the steam semantics is just one of the, one of the ways that you could make this work. Um, I just want to add that. Uh, yeah, thanks, but that's useful. That Mason or less weird. I mean, it's probably do the justice to this proposal. Yeah, thanks. I also had a question. But there is, um, the, 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 I was, when we were studying the Van Aan paper together, I did not, uh, I, was, uh, I did not properly see that he was basically only talking about, about type force uh, uh, sentences. But that was the goal why he made this. So I'm now wondering, uh, and it makes of course total sense, uh, like reconstructing my, the way I read the paper. Uh, but if you look at, 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 at the continuum hypothesis, how does he approach it? Is it a possible type four question, or is it a four sentence, or is it? Uh, uh, doesn't he say whether it is one, or he th he thinks it's not one? It's not the kind of thing that his system is supposed to deal with. Uh, th it, th that's something that could that I should check, uh, but. SSCH could be anything, yeah? any of the well-known undecidable stuff in the FFC. I have the feeling that for uh, just uh, CH, I would say that it's type 3. Um, so, it, it, because it's just an, an, yeah, that's an, an undecidable statement of ZFC, um, mm. but um, there could be ways to settle it um, uh, 
perhaps from the large cardinals, axioms, and all these work in set theory. So I think that I would say that it's type three, um, and that he considers something even um, on, on another level uh, in his paper. And when he says that, because he, he really uses the term absolutely undecidable. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I don't think that he would consider CH as absolutely undecidable, but. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, he could. I mean, there is nothing that but, yeah. forces him to consider it as not absolutely no, undecidable, no. right? Because no. after all, we are still debating about this. Uh, uh, but you think that he would not see it as a type of force sentence? That's that. Yeah, that's that's my that's my feeling. But I'm I'm not sure. So he would think that it has a definite truth value in his system. CH. I, I, I don't know if he says that. I don't think so. But if it's not a type 4 sentence, then it has to have a... Definite yeah, yeah, it must have a, a definitive uh, truth okay. value. Yes, yeah, some, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but uh, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I have the, the feeling, but perhaps that's... Um, um, that the formal framework here first, allows also to take it uh, into account type 3 um, uh, and uh, um, statements. I, I don't see in all the developments any reason, even in, in team semantics, or why you, you wouldn't be able to deal with, um, with the other type of, um, of statements. No, 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 he's able to deal with all of them, but, but in a it's not the topic of the paper. Uh, they don't. Con con they don't. Uh, I mean, th they are mostly more epistemic notions. The, the other distinctions, like uh, it's about what we can know and what we type, type type one and type four has nothing to do with what we can know. Uh, I mean, so like the distinction between one, two, three, and four is not a knowability thing. It's about absoluteness. Absolute. Uh, whether it's absolutely decided or not, um, and it's with those absolute that, that he deals, not with these other distinctions. Yeah. Of course, it's perfectly compatible with the system that that it would be type three yeah. or right type two or any uh, well not type one, but uh, uh, you see it. It's it's um, the distinction that is the system <coughs> seems to be made for is between one, two, three, and four. Yeah, and so the, 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 the f yeah, so the reason why he proposed that kind of multiverse, because, um, so would the universe of Amkins be able to also deal with type four um, statements? I, I, I Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he, I guess Hankins wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to make a distinction between, uh, on the one hand, one, uh, no, between one, like, I guess Hankins, but I'm not, I don't know whether this is correct, eh? but given the, the speed that the talk you gave, I would say that Hankins is more like uh, interested in a distinction between one on the one hand and two, three, and four on the other hand. Mm -hmm. Like there's this NFC stuff that is, uh, fixed in all the multiverses, uh, all the universes in the multiverse, and then some ones we can access and so on, and uh, like the, there the, the more epistemic constructions are more important. Um, uh, while I would say after your talk and, and my recall of what the paper for now, it's more one to three and four. Uh, so it, it doesn't mean that either of the two cannot deal with, with, with one, two, three, or four. It's just if you are if you're a hardcore universalist like Wooden, you cannot deal with four, or, or you cannot deal. It doesn't exist. You can deal with the category, but there is no such thing as a sentence without truth value. Um, but but 
as a proper multiversalist, uh, all these four categories make sense, I guess. But, yes, so it means that we, t we end up with two, uh, two types of uh, multiverse tools that are very different, mm -hmm. but who, uh, that are able to uh, handle the same kind of issue. So what's the right framework between the two of them? So, <laughs> so that's, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know, but I think it's something that, that it's... Um, Just to understand your debate, could you explain how Ankin 3, Type 4? Um, how we would understand Type 4 in the Ankin multiverse? It's it's also type four in our case. It's yes. Yeah, so, so I would say just mm, it doesn't have this category. It doesn't matter so much for him. But but if there is a type four, it's just one of them. it will be true in some universe and and also in some other universe, and that's enough. It doesn't uh, matter in some way. But but whether it's unknowable for us or absolutely. Uh, uh, undecidable. That that is something he can the distinction he cannot make. <coughs> but it has this distinction between internal and external, and kin. So so, from which point of view we would see that the internal and the external we could play on this to to, to say something different than uh, uh, <laughs> the one between. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. That I, that I said that uh, the, the concern of Amkins is uh, more on type two and three, and Van yeah. is introduced. In, yeah, that's true. Um, but, but, the but, way I understand your talk, yeah, that's I'm true. confused is that Amkin would just say. There's no such thing in my construction. So, so if you wanted to treat it, I was asking how, because it seems obvious to you. I, I would say that it does not. The distinction does not really matter because I think that it doesn't change anything to the construction. Okay, but I thought. <laughs> I'm confused now. Yeah, yeah. I thought that for Hankin, when you are internal, the internal point of view, you have a definite value. Yeah, yeah. From the external point of view, you can say, okay, it could be true, it could be false. Okay? But this is not absolute indecidibility. I thought that in absolute indecidibility was something stronger. Or something else. Or I, I misunderstood absolute indecidibility. As I see it, like you, you need to have this internal and external perspective, but also in the external perspective, you have to put yourself in a universe, uh, in a higher, a bigger universe that can, or which where you can look down on, mm -hmm. on the two other universes, something like that. So sort of out of mobile. Uh, yes, from the uh, uh, external, it's true there and false there. So yeah. It's true or false. From my point of view, looking at the different contexts, yes. I thought that absolutely indecidibility was the absence of of a, of a true value completely. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't totally clear to me. Yeah, that's could that point. <laughs> could you explain to I me? I had to think there was two definitions in type four. Like, first is that there is no truth value, and the other was like true in one universe and false in another. And so, uh, but maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, from from, from, from uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's I, I really in introduced it like that. That absolutely undecidable for me in Van and means that that does not even exist a truth value to the statement. So it's very strong. Yeah, yeah that's um, that's. It's not just that the true value is universe relative. No, that's oh, it's, okay. it's, it's just, yeah. 
you will never have access to it, whatever happens. Okay. That's that's how I understand. But, but in a universe, it, it can have a true value. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's, that's I don't that's thing. Yeah, but, but it's this. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can. No, I, I think Hamkins would just deny this idea of truth. Simply sit there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe the proper answer to give. Uh, like you always are in a universe, even if you're not aware of it. I mean, to do the proper mathematics, you have to imagine that there being something surrounding you being a universe. Uh, then you might consider the, the existence of other universes, but and you can study them. But you're always in a universe, uh, so there's all. It's always universe relative. Uh, while this notion of truth, just this, like this sentence is true or not, I, I think I think Hamkins would not uh, like that. Uh, um, and so type four, in a sense, can perfectly happen, but it's not. I mean, to the extent that, that there is then sort of a truth that is not uh, depending on the universe, it should be one that is true in all <coughs> in all the universe that he's considering legitimate. And that's basically just the ZFC uh, actions and their, their consequences uh, that are true. And you don't have to mention the universe, but what, because whatever you will end up in will always be true. Uh, but CH, yeah. Will be out. I mean, in that, if you see it that way, I would say then, then, then for Hamkins, uh, everything that is undecidable <coughs> that I see is, is going to be out for. Uh, but yeah, it's complicated. Uh, that we should ask him uh, what, what, what he thinks of this type 4 category. Um, okay, I guess we are happy. <laughs> <laughs> Are we?